everybody. This is, sorry, this is our lesson on lab safety. And this is our first lesson for the course. So this is a very good example to show you um, what your note videos would look like, what you can kind of expect when it comes to taking notes in the class, things like that. Um, and this is a good one to start with because it's very simple. Your objective for this lesson is to be able to apply safety procedures in the lab setting. So first thing that we need to know is lab safety is a group concept. So if one person messes up with lab safety, it could really, really affect everybody in the group. So you've got to make sure you're all on the same page. Always use caution in the lab. If you have a question, ask. Um, a lot of times I will say, you know, did you read the procedure? Have you asked your group mates before you come to me, especially the more we're in the lab? Um, but always use caution, you know, ask questions, read over your procedure, make sure you know what you're doing. Handle chemicals carefully. Don't, um, you'll see this later, don't just spill them, drink them, sniff them. Just use caution. And no horseplay in the lab for sure. So make sure you're not goofing off. It's a very, very um, technical part of the class. You have to use professionalism in the lab. Make sure you read and follow all directions. Learn your emergency procedures, which um, we will go over together in class. And know where all of your emergency equipment is stored, where the fire extinguishers are, where the fire blanket is, um, safety showers, things like that. Just make sure you know where all of that is located. And then make sure to keep your walkways in the lab clear of clutter. So like no book bags, um, cords, things like that. Just make sure it's easy to get in and out of the lab. And, you know, here's some cute little gifts. So dress code is very, very important for the lab. We, we have to make sure that we're dressing correctly. Um, no shorts, skirts, or open-toed shoes. You have to make sure to wear, preferably, especially for the classes that I teach, I like jeans or sweatpants. Thicker material that covers the entire leg. Um, and closed-toed shoes because you stand up in the lab, so the first place things go when you spill them are on your legs or on your feet. So you need to make sure those are protected. No ballet slippers, no socks with sandals. First of all, that's hideous. So definitely don't do that. Um, so just make sure everything is covered basically from like waist down because that's where things get spilled or hit when you spill first. Um, you can roll up your long sleeves. I'm not so picky about long sleeves, um, but you can roll them up, especially if you get hot normally um, and you're wearing those in class. Make sure if you have long hair, it is tied back with a hair tie. Um, doesn't have to be cute. It just has to be a way. And when I say tied back, not a loose, low pony, like something up high so it still won't fall over your shoulder. Um, no dangling jewelry, necklaces, bracelets, earrings. Just make sure you take those off before the lab. Safety goggles are a must for every lab. No questions asked. Um, depending on what chemicals we're using, I might have you wear an apron. Uh, lab coats are more for higher level, so we don't really worry so much about those. And again, keep your walkways clear. Get rid of books, book bags, pocketbooks, things like that. And you see safety dress there. When you're handling chemicals, so this is very important, especially as you move into chemistry. Um, if that's not the course that you're already in, I'm making this for all of my science courses. So um, physical science, you'll use some chemicals. Chemistry, you'll definitely use them. Biology, you'll use a couple. Uh, but it's good for everybody to know as you move through other science courses. Do not use any bottles that are not labeled because you don't know what chemicals they are. Um, hopefully, I'm good at my job, which means they should all be labeled or at least labeled as unknowns. That's another thing that we could look at there. Don't taste anything in the lab unless instructed to do so. So um, please don't just eat anything. That should go without saying, but you know, it happens. Sometimes we will do food labs. So that obviously are things that those are things you can eat. 
Um, but that's after a lot of precaution has been taken to clean anything that we might have to use for that lab um, if it's not disposable. So please don't just taste anything. When you smell something, do not stick your nose right over it and smell it. You have to waft it to your nose so that um, you're getting a percentage of the smell. Because sometimes there are chemicals that if you smell them right out, they could make you pass out. So you've got to be very careful with that. No unauthorized experiments. So you can't just do what you want in there. You have to actually follow the procedure that's given to you. And then make sure you don't touch like your face, eyes, mouth, um, really your skin if we're using certain chemicals because there are some that make you very itchy. There are some that will burn you. So you've got to make sure you're careful with that. So that's a cute little doll. Accidents and procedures. So there are certain ones we need to make sure we are aware of. If anything happens in the lab that's not supposed to, please notify me first. Um, <clears throat> certain labs are going to be digital labs, virtual labs for you. So obviously, you know, you don't have to do anything with that. But if you or your group have some sort of accident that happened in the lab, please make sure to tell me first so that we can determine the best way to take care of it. So the first type, the most common type that you'll see are spills. With spills, if something gets in your eyes, um, with or without safety goggles on, you have to rinse your eyes in the eye wash for 15 minutes and that water is ice cold. So please, please watch out from getting stuff in your eyes. If anything gets on your skin, you have to rinse it in the sink for 15 minutes. Again, with cold water. If it happens to be a large spill on you, like clothes and everything, you have to get in the chemical shower for 15 minutes. If you have a spill on your countertop, then you need to neutralize it with the correct agent. You don't just add water. You don't just wipe it up. If it's an acid, you need to neutralize it with a base. If it's a base, you need to neutralize it with an acid. So just make sure, you know, this is why you tell me so that I can give you the correct uh, neutralizer. The next thing you could see is fire. If there is a fire in the lab, obviously you'll turn off the fire source, which would be your Bunsen burner, and you'll use the correct equipment for putting out the flame. So if the flame is on a countertop, then it could be that you use your extinguisher. We have two different types, one that's used for just regular fire, one that's used for a chemical fire. They do not work the same. Also, if someone catches on fire, you don't want to blow them off with an extinguisher. You want to use the fire blanket. So there are different pieces of equipment to understand. And then breaks are the last big thing that you'll see here uh, in the lab, pretty common. Uh, you just sweep up any broken glass and dispose of in the broken glass box. Uh, we'll have the, that equipment ready for you as well. Do not pick it up by hand. That's how you get hurt and you get to go to the nurse. All right, guys, so that was our lesson on lab safety. I know it was quick, but most of these videos will be pretty quick to keep them kind of short. Um, but now you should be able to apply what you've learned in um, safety for the lab setting. So very good, guys. Can't wait to see you for the next lesson.